uni. Um, hi everyone, my name's Reese. I'm an ambassador for Not Going to Uni and I'm also a supply chain leadership degree level apprentice at DHL. Thank you. So just to give you a bit of an overview of who Not Going to Uni are, we are essentially a jobs board like Read and Indeed, but more specifically for anything that is not going to university. So traineeships, apprenticeships, gap years, entry level jobs, work experience and literally anything that's not uni. Um, what you can do is come onto our website, you can search for any industry you were looking for, you can have a look by location and filter by other different variables as well, and you can apply for anything that kind of comes up under what you were looking for. We work with all different employers all over the UK and there's a huge wide variety of different jobs on there with ones getting added every single day. Um, as Reese mentioned, he is an, one of our ambassadors and he is also a, currently an apprentice at DHL. So I'm going to pass over to Reese to tell us a bit about himself and then we'll go into some questions just so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like to be an apprentice um, in day to day life. So thank you, Laura. So as Laura mentioned, I'm a degree level apprentice at DHL Supply Chain. Uh, for those of you wondering what a degree level apprenticeship is, it's a fantastic opportunity to combine both a degree with hands-on work experience. The experience I've gained from 18 years of age in a large logistics company has been phenomenal and the kind of experience I never would have thought I would have been able to get at that age. Um, I'm studying a supply chain management degree at Aston University. Uh, I get the exact same qualification that I would get if I went to university on its own, but I'm also getting hands-on management experience from a young age. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for me to get my foot in the door in an industry that I'd never previously heard of, uh, get hands-on valuable work experience and also get the full degree without paying a single penny for it. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, so a question, I'm just going to go through some questions really, but a question that we've been asked on the stand quite a few times today already is about the social life and do you really miss out on having a social life because you're not going to university? So I thought it would be good to get Reese's opinion on that. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's fair to say that obviously if you're not going to uni full time, you don't have all the same experiences of living in student halls and everything like that. But what it does give you is the fantastic opportunity to network with people professionally within your university and also peers and others like minded in your organisation. Uh, in my specific example, I go down to my university approximately every six weeks where I'll spend two or three days there. Other apprenticeships, you might have a block week or a block month. So that still gives you a good opportunity to socialise, usually at the expense of your organisation, um, while still making good friends and professional uh, connections and networks. Um, I'm also able to afford to do all the great things that students struggle to do uh, because I'm paid a really competitive wage, especially for my age. Um, companies also pay really well into your pensions, uh, bonuses and yeah, it's just a really good opportunity to meet people professionally in the workplace but still enjoy some of the elements that you would have from university on its own. Perfect, thank you. Um, another kind of question we get asked quite a bit is about balancing life, because obviously it's really difficult if you're doing your apprenticeship, you kind of have to manage your social life, your uni work or your college work, whatever kind of apprenticeship you're doing, and obviously that full-time job as well. Um, and it can be really challenging, so I thought I'd also ask Reese about that. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, no lie because it's the exact same qualification you'd get if you're going to university alone. It's uh, quite demanding in terms of workload. Um, you're doing the exact same qualification, usually just stretched out a bit further. So my uh, degree is four years, four years in length, which comprises of a three-year degree. And then I move on to an endpoint assessment, which basically means uh, I have to present a lot of evidence, making sure that I meet the apprenticeship criteria. So not only will I come out with uh, my degree, I'll also have a certificate to say that I've met the uh, standard for the apprenticeship as well. Um, it's definitely challenging. Uh, as I said, you're doing the exact same credits and modules you'd do if you went to university alone. Um, but if you get into really good structure with the support of your peers and your line managers, you'll very quickly learn how to start balancing it, not leaving things to the last minute and making sure you keep on top of your deadlines. Um, for me, I take roughly one day a week, which compromises of usually a lecture in the morning and then I'll uh, complete my assignments so the work in the afternoon. For the people, it works differently. It just depends on your organisation. Uh, your role and how um, and how to best manage your time. Some people like to take an afternoon and a morning. It really just depends on on your workload and what you've got going on. 
Perfect, thank you. And I think an important thing to note with that as well is that on our website, when you go and have a look at all the different opportunities available for you, there will be information on the kind of typical pattern of when you will have to do your study as well um, for each individual employer. So that is all on there for you. Um, another common question we get asked is about the application process and how you can kind of differentiate yourself. Obviously, there's so many apprenticeships out there nowadays and they are very competitive in various different industries. Um, so, Rhys, do you want to tell us a bit about your application application process and kind of how you got to where you are. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say that the application process for an apprenticeship is really quite ri rigorous and more so than it probably would be just for university. Um, not only are the companies wanting to see if you can do the qualification, they're also wanting to make a long-term investment in you. Obviously, if you do the apprenticeship and leave, then that's fair enough. But the company is really wanting to invest in you and, and make the most out of the, the talent and the skills that they have available for their future workforce. Um, so for me, I initially applied online. That was some situational judgment questions. Uh, I mean, a basic kind of... Um, qualification inputting, CV inputting, all that kind of information. That then moved on to recorded video interview where you get asked some questions on the spot and you get 60 seconds to think of an answer and then 60 seconds to film. So it's quite intense, high pressure, makes you think on your feet. Uh, and then that usually moves on to an assessment center, which is usually the final stage of uh, an apprenticeship application. And um, that usually involves um, a team building task, teamwork task, um, a one-to-one -one interview and then maybe presentation. They're really trying to see what sort of skills you have, soft skills, and really try and spot uh, potential in you. They are rigorous, but it's all for the right reasons. You're trying to invest in a company as much as they're investing in you. So it's really good that they can see that dedication and commitment and see they are going to be the right fit for them because the last thing they want to do is put you under the spot in an apprenticeship where you're not going to be able to achieve the results that you need to achieve or be able to manage the, the deadlines and the expectations of that. I think it's really important to understand that um, they're not always a walk in the park but a good way to manage that is by researching the company you're applying for researching the roles taking a bit of time out to actually understand what it is you can bring to an organization but what they can bring to you make sure you have questions to ask them it doesn't necessarily have to be a one-way thing if you're being interviewed you can always ask them questions about what are they going to bring for you what does the future look like and what opportunities can they give you because those are really the thought-provoking conversations that will make a company um, see that you're looking into the future, you're trying to get the most out of the opportunity for them. And I think the most important part is actually just being yourself. It sounds really quite simple, but if you're trying to put on a facade that's not really you, if you're getting through to the final stages and you're not actually being yourself, they might see you as being someone who's maybe not suitable or you're trying to sell yourself on something you're not capable of doing, which is really a quite a detrimental mistake, which <laughs> will impact potentially two, three, four years on this journey, which might not be right for you. So it's really important to be yourself they'll probably spot something in you you're usually faced with lots of different assessors people who are professionals at finding the right kind of people so being yourself is really quite important in this process yeah no absolutely and also with that with the application process and interviews and things like that on our website we do also have um, a blog section on our Instagram and YouTube we also have videos which kind of take you through the process um, so if you don't even find an opportunity on the website which we hope you do of course um, but if you don't there are those resources for you as well so that you can use them for um, applying for different um, apprenticeships through other methods as well um, also Reese, I thought it would be good to ask you just about the day to day kind of life you have and also about the placement you do um, obviously with a lot of different apprenticeships you kind of take placements through different um, sectors of the business and in different sectors of what your apprenticeship is in so it'd be good to hear about that as well uh, yeah, so my scheme that I'm on is four years long. This will vary from employer to employer and level of apprenticeship. Usually degree level apprenticeships are around three, four or five years long, depending on what level they are. Um, but it's a really good uh, opportunity to gain different experience and different placements. So on my program, I have two two-year placements, which gives me a really good opportunity to start to learn the groundwork, the basics, and then start to put those into play. So I've just spent two years working in one of our large transport operations um, for a high street retailer. Um, not many people really understand what supply chain or logistics is, but given the two-year placement, I've been able to really understand what that is from someone who's had very little experience as a fresh-faced 18-year-old not knowing about the world of work, to actually be able to start taking real management responsibility at a young age and have a real impact and detriment on the operation. So this has given me a really good understanding of how to build my soft skills, um, start to put my apprenticeship into play, uh, because more often than not, your qualification will be built around your day-to-day -day job. So I've been able to really start to implement my learnings, take my workplace back 
back and put that into my degree and really get a good combination of the both, uh, of the two, sorry. Uh, I'm now moving on to another placement at Manchester Airport, which is a really good opportunity, again, to learn a different environment, gain different skills, work with different people, so that when I come out of my apprenticeship, I've had two really good, strong placements. Maybe they're where I want to take my future, maybe not, but it's given me a really good opportunity to gain that experience with no strings attached, uh, essentially. Um, you do have a really good position as an apprentice where people are really keen to invest in you. There's opportunities to make mistakes, go out there and learn, um, and, and make the most that you've got. You can get into meetings, you can you know, gain some really good experience that you might not, not get if you were just going for a, a normal job uh, whilst you're following that apprentice banner. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to gain different experiences and different placements. That, that will vary, like I said, from employer to employer, but more often than not, they'll move you around the organisation so you get a really good understanding and general knowledge of the business. Perfect, thank you. Um, another kind of common thing that we get asked is, why should I do an apprenticeship? Um, and I think it's really difficult because there are so many different options you can take when you finish your A-levels or GCSEs, whatever kind of path you take. Um, so I guess, Reese, why did you choose to do an apprenticeship and what kind of advice would you give to people considering doing one? Yeah, sure. So I think for me, uh, the apprenticeship route stood out, um, although it was quite hidden a couple of years ago, especially during the start of COVID and going through high school, um, I was really encouraged to go down the university route. And although I wanted to continue to progress academically, I was quite career and work driven and found that the apprenticeship was the good opportunity to combine both of them and get the best of both. Um, in a competitive job market nowadays, experience usually speaks louder than qualifications, although that's not always the case. Having that hands-on work experience can really set you apart from others and really make your qualification relatable. So for me, it was being able to combine the two, um, get my foot in, in the door in an industry, uh, and also come, uh, earn a competitive salary. I think that's one of the biggest drawers for apprenticeships. You start earning from day one. Obviously, different companies and different sectors will pay different salaries, but I was earning a really competitive salary for my age when I just started at 18. So those were sort of two of the main reasons. Um, it basically just gives you an opportunity to learn something you might not have had the chance to learn about before. Um, and just open your doors to, to different ideas and different prospects. Uh, I initially, originally did A-levels in maths, physics and IT, thinking I wanted to do engineering. Um, however, I quickly discovered from applying for different things that engineering was something I was interested in, but when I was applying through different companies, I found other things that I was interested in and other prospects and potentials that I could see myself going down. So for me, it was really about broadening my horizons, applying for different opportunities uh, and learning around the, the world of work and what interests industries are out there. Perfect, thank you. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, Just generally. <laughs> no? No, we'll see if there's anybody. Yeah, I was going to say, does anybody have any, any questions initially? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> um, we are also outside on a stand um, just to the left here, so if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to come and talk to us. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>